What's up everybody? In this video, I'll be teaching you everything that you need to know about the branchial apparatus. This topic is sometimes referred to as the pharyngeal arches, but the more correct terminology is the branchial apparatus. Now in this video, we'll go through everything that you need to know about the embryological development of this system. And I'll give you a really easy mnemonic to remember like 95% maybe of all the information that's fair game for USMLE and Comlex. I noticed a lot of people saying things like, I'm not going to bother memorizing this. I'm not going to bother learning this. I'm just going to chalk it up. If I get a question on test day, whatever, I'll guess. And I just, honestly, I think that's kind of dumb because it's really easy to memorize if you use my mnemonic. So let's just get right into it. A little bit of background information first. So like I said, some people refer to this topic as the pharyngeal arches, but that's technically not the correct term. The term branchial apparatus is an umbrella term that refers to three different things. There are branchial clefts, branchial arches, and branchial pouches. You can use the term branchial or pharyngeal interchangeably. So you might see this as the pharyngeal apparatus, which gives rise to pharyngeal clefts, pharyngeal arches, and pharyngeal pouches. Now, when most people refer to this topic, they're saying pharyngeal arches because that's the kind of scariest table of information that you need to know. But there are actually three different subsystems, if you will, that each give rise to different structures. Now, each of these different three substructures or, or subgroups come from different parts of the developing embryo. So the branchial clefts come from the ectoderm. The branchial arches or the pharyngeal arches come from a combination of the mesoderm and the neural crest. And the branchial pouches come from the endoderm. The way that you can memorize this is what you see on this slide. So cleft Think of the C and cleft for the C and ectoderm. Branchial pouches makes me think of a kangaroo pouch. A kangaroo's pouch is on the inside of its, you know, stomach or whatever area that is, and inside for endo. So it's endoderm. It's the inside of their skin. The pouch is the inside of the kangaroo's skin. And then by process of elimination, you know it's not the one with C. You know it's not the one with pouch. Therefore, arches must come from whatever's left over, which is the mesoderm. Now, the way that I think you should go about this is using my mnemonic. So I'm a big fan of just like one sentence mnemonics where each of the words in the sentence reminds you or cues you in about a different thing. So we can all agree that pharyngeal arches or the branchial apparatus, just generally speaking, is a vague thing that is tough to study. And you have to study this during your second year of medical school when you're preparing for boards. So as such, my mnemonic is that MS2 problems are vague. So MS2 for second year of med school, MS2 problems are vague because we really don't want to study all of this vague generalized information. So here we go. So going from left to right, each of these things stands for a different branchial number. So the arches, the pouches, etc. this is all numbered from one to six. So you've got the first pharyngeal arch, for example, the second pharyngeal arch. And each of those different numbers gives rise to different nerves, arteries, muscles, etc. So on USMLE or Comlex, they're going to give you either the number and ask you which structure came from it or give you the structure and ask you which number it came from. So it's pretty specific and it's hard to memorize. So you got to use this mnemonic. So the M in MS2 problems are vague. Um, we're obviously talking about the arch slash pouch number one. So everything having to do with the letter M comes from the first uh, pharyngeal arch, first pharyngeal pouch. So we're talking about things like the muscles of mastication, Meckel's cartilage, the maxilla, the meatus, which is short for the external acoustic meatus, the bones of the middle ear, the mastoid air cells, the maxillary artery. The arteries are particularly high yield. Know which one is coming from which arch slash pouch. The mylohyoid and V3 trigem inal nerve. So the M and trigem inal V3. All right. So now the S in MS2 problems are vague tells us everything that comes from arch slash pouch number two, and it's going to be everything with the letter S. So the stapes, the styloid, the stylohyoid, the stapedius, all of the muscles controlled by the nerve that controls smiling. So that's the facial nerve. And the artery is going to be the stapedial artery. Okay. Now we skip two. Two is just there to help our mnemonic make more sense. We go to, to, to the P in problems. All right. So MS2 problems are vague. So problems or the P in problems tells us that we're dealing with everything that has P or pharyngeus in the name. So from arch pouch number three, we're talking about the stylo pharyngeus, P and pharyngeus. 
the glossopharyngeal nerve, the pharyngeal, the parathyroid glands, specifically the inferior ones, and then the two arteries are going to be the internal carotid artery and the common carotid artery. The way that I remembered that, there's actually two ways. One, it's a major problem if those arteries are severed. So you think of a very dramatized action movie where somebody gets their neck cut. Um, that person usually ends up dying in the movie. So it's a big problem if those arteries are cut. But the other thing is that if you think about where the stylopharyngeus is, where the inferior parathyroid glands are, the, the carotids kind of run down around that region. So I kind of just pair them up with all the, the P stuff, and it makes a little bit of sense here. The last part of this mnemonic is the V in vague. And now we jump to arch slash pouch numbers four and six. Five is not important, so we go right to four and six. And at both four and six, it's everything that has to do with the vagus nerve. So both four and six, the nerve is the vagus nerve. And then there's two different sub, you know, more specific versions of the vagus nerve. So arch slash pouch number four, that's superior laryngeal. And arch slash pouch number six, that's the recurrent laryngeal. But if you look at all the other structures, it's all related to, to the vagus nerve. So arytenoids, cri cricoid, corniculate, um, the ultomobranchial body, parafollicular cells, superior parathyroid. Some of that stuff you, you might have to memorize, but if you think like things that are controlled by or related to the vagus, it makes a lot of sense, especially the arteries. So here you get the pulmonary arteries and ductus arteriosus on the left side. And I think that makes a lot of sense because now we're talking about pulmonary arteries, so arteries involved with respiration, and ductus arteriosus makes me think of the heart, and both the heart and lungs parasympathetically are mediated by the vagus nerve. So again, in this mnemonic, you know that the V in vague tells you about everything vagus for four and six. So if I'm dealing with an artery that is controlled or related to the vagus nerve, it's obviously going to be from arch slash pouch four and six. Really, the only distinction, again, is you want to know that four is superior laryngeal and six is recurrent laryngeal. So that's really it. I know I flew through that, but the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that it's not too bad if you use something stupid like this mnemonic. I know this is very silly. Uh, MS2 problems are vague, but really, if it has an M, guess number one. If it has an S, guess number two. If it has a P, guess number three. If it's somehow related to the vagus nerve, guess four or six. If you do it in broad strokes like that, you're going to get at least half the questions right purely on guessing. But if you can get more specific and actually go through these lists of things that I put on the slide, you can approach a 100% correct answer rate on your exam. So I'm trying to give you guys tools to make this simpler. I hope this was useful for you, but that's it. Keep up the great work.